People returned today to their Dallas high-rise offices one day after a deadly fire. And family members of those killed are trying to understand exactly what went wrong. Nicasio Carrillo, Luis Carrillo, and Oscar Esparza Romo died in what may have been some sort of work accident, but all of that is still under investigation right now. Fox 4's Melissa Cutler is outside Thanksgiving Tower tonight with what we've learned today. Melissa. Well, Steve, we know that in terms of OSHA incidents that involve three or more people that are either hospitalized or involve a death, they tend to prioritize those incidents in terms of investigations. And we know that in this particular case, it more than meets that criteria. The 50-story high-rise looked the same this morning, except for the closed access to the parking garage where three workers lost their lives. For many workers, it's as if everything has changed at Thanksgiving Tower the day after the accident. I feel so bad for those people's family. Put them in our prayers. It's definitely a, a little bit uh, somber mood. By the afternoon, public access to garage level B2 reopened. That's the deck where the fire call was reported and where large fans were still visible near an area roped off with caution tape. Safety investigators say the workers who died, 60-year-old Nicasio Carrillo, his 43-year-old nephew Luis, and 36-year-old Oscar Esparza, were using a welding torch on a 30-foot deep water tank, which caught fire, spreading thick smoke through the garage. The smell was real strong in the staircase, so we knew that it wasn't a drill. It's heartbreaking. It's heartbreaking. All three men worked for Texas HVAC, a subcontractor of Best Mechanical, hired to clean four water tanks. DFR confirms the building and contractor did not have current welding permits. The building's permits for welding or cutting operations expired in March, and Best Mechanical's permits expired five years ago. Thanksgiving Tower has been undergoing an $18 million renovation. Please do not congregate in this area. A spokesman for DFR says firefighters used thermal imaging equipment, yet still couldn't get to the three men. They say their equipment uses temperature to find people in heavy smoke, but they were still hampered by logistics, such as figuring out how to get to the victims. It's all too close to home for office workers, who say they're still spooked. It just proves that uh, you should value every moment because you never know when it's your last. Now, if there were violations present, OSHA may issue citations. And as you can imagine, Steve, it could cost several parties a whole lot of money. 